Hey there, hey everybody, how are you doing today? I wanted to talk about how we're gonna start our underpainting. Uh, and I'm gonna record this session so you can see it over again and that sort of thing too. We'll also be able to answer questions during our live sessions. But in order to get set up, we've already talked about materials, we've already talked about brushes. When it comes to having a palette, and in this case, I'm only working with three colors. We have our white, in this case, it's a titanium zinc white mix. We have our very dark orange. In this case, it's either a burnt sienna. Uh, I prefer a transparent oxide red, and I think you'll find out why in a little bit. We'll talk about some examples. And then I have an ultramarine blue. So when you think about it, what we have is a very limited palette setup. We have white for, to make the colors lighter and to tint the colors. We have orange, and then the Complement to orange is an ultramarine blue. So if we were to remember our textbook that we've talked about in class, in this case, this is James Gurney's Color and Light. Great book. I would suggest it to all of you to get. It's an incredible resource. Here, the small limited palette that we're using to set up, it can be emulated in this particular scene here. We have warm and cool. We have complements. When we mix complement colors, as we've learned in our color theory class, we get neutrals. So you can see over here on the right, an example of the cool and warm palette, cool and warm working against each other. The darks tend to be warm or they can be cool or they can be very neutral in between. So that's all I wanted to use this for. We are going to do our underpainting in this limited palette, and then we're gonna add a full chromatic palette on top of it, just to let you guys have access to this, try to explain colors we're going along at the same time too. So if I look at this, one of the reasons I chose transparent oxide red is because when I mix it with white, and one of the reasons I've set my palette up this way is so that if I mix an equal version of my warm or orange color, and an equal version of my blue. I mix that together with my palette knife. You can see that I can get a pretty neutral and very dark color. Now it's hard when it's this dark to, to determine is it warm or cool. Only when I add a little bit of white to my palette can I tell or de determine if it's neutral or not. Look at that, I got pretty darn close to perfect neutral. And how do you know? Look at this background color. This is a perfect neutral five gray. And by mixing the orange and the blue, my burnt sienna and my ultramarine blue together, equally, I get very close to a perfect neutral. When I add white, I can determine. I can see right now it's slightly warm. If I were to add just a little bit more blue to it, I can lean it towards the cool version of gray and make it almost exactly a perfect neutral gray. And so this way I know if I determine I want it to be slightly warmer, I add a little bit more warmth to my mixture. So that when I add white, as I will do here. You can see that my neutral turns a little towards what we think of as a brown or a tan, but it's still warmer. Whereas if I clean my palette again, my knife, now I'm gonna pick up my middle, add blue to it, make this much cooler. It's still very dark and you can see the black, the blue makes it almost look like a richer midnight black which is a much cooler, so that when I add white to it, look at my gray, it's very cool gray. And so notice also the way I've laid my palette out. If I know that I need to remix a color, I will almost always start this way. Colors that I mix that I want to be perfectly neutral, I mix within the neutral middle part of my palette. As I add white to go lighter, I move up my palette. As I want my colors to get darker, I move down on my palette. 
So as I do the same thing, if I want my colors to move more towards the warm, I move to the left side of my palette. As I want my colors to look cooler, I move to the right side of my palette. And so you, I can do this in a way. Got a paper towel, always need paper towels in your painting studio. Uh, so if I wanted to, I could make it perfect, just blue and just white over here towards the top. We're on the far right side. And you can see there's my blue. And here's why I pick a transparent oxide red. When I mix it with white, I get a beautiful, still saturated, earthy orange. This can also make really nice skin tones. See what I'm talking about there? So I can get a really nice, but look at the range between the orange and the blue and all the differences grays in between. I hope that helps you out, kind of get a little bit of understanding of how I set my palettes up and how we will be using this very limited palette to create a value painting, a monochromatic value painting for our gnome that we're gonna start on.